what we're going to do now is we're going to integrate uh, Superbase. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go through and do a whole um, intro on how to set up a Superbase project because I have tons of other content that will cover that. So, and I will, as I said, I will include links to the videos. But um, for those who aren't familiar, just a quick overview, Superbase is, uh, they're calling it a Firebase alternative. You spin up a whole backend infrastructure based on a Postgres database. It includes authentication, APIs, subscription, storage, and all that other fun stuff. Um, as I said, I have a bunch of other videos that cover this, and so I'll add the link to them. We're working with an existing Superbase project that I have already created, and I'm going to show you how to set up the configuration to access that, proce that uh, project in your own React application. So um, to get that working, one of the first things that I like to do is I don't want to incorporate my configuration information hard-coded into my files. So I like to use a .env file. So we're going to create a new .env file, .env. Um, this needs to sit at the root level of your project. And so make sure that you don't put it inside of any other folders. So as you can see, I have my .env file at the root level. In my .env file, I need a couple of uh, variables to connect to Superbase. Specifically, I need the public key. So I'm going to create my public key that will be inside this file. And then I need the actual URL to um, uh, Superbase. So that will be the other one that I will create here. I will add my values in and kind of, you know, clearly I'm not going to show you my values. And then I will show you how we actually use the file. So hold on a second while I add my stuff. Okay, I'm back. So I've now added my stuff and I need some way to get access to it. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new file. I'll create another new file here at the root level of my project. And I'm going to call this, I'll move it, superbase.service.js. And let's get it out of my screens folder and get it back up here at the top. So let's move it. So now you can see it's up here at the top. Let's open up Superbase service. And then inside of Superbase service, um, first I need to import the JavaScript API which that's what I've done there. The other thing that I need to do is I need to import uh, my environment variables. And then I also need access to uh, local storage because Superbase counts for uh, looking for local storage. And so as you can see, there's a couple of libraries that I need to include in here to make all this stuff come together. And to let's start with them at the top. So async storage is exactly what it sounds like. It's async storage. Um, Oh no, sorry. This is the this is saying uh, my bad. This is saying how it has been deprecated. Um, so it's deprecated from React Native. So you need to use a community package, and the community package that I found is this guy, a React Native async storage. It's pretty active. Does everything we needed to do. Um, here's the installation documentation. Uh, I'm going to do, I think that I've been doing yarn, so let's kind of stick with that. So I need to do an expo install, so let's create another folder. I mean, another terminal window here, and let's install the async storage. And as you can see, also there's something else up here. I, um, I need another library to install my .env. Sure enough. There's an npm package called React Native.env, and it kind of there's a bunch of there's some other setup stuff that I need to do that I'll walk through. But the first thing I need to do is install the package. So let's install the package right now, and we're gonna follow kind of this same uh, expo install approach, and we're gonna install React Native.e n B. Oh, not dot. React Native. Spell it out. D O T E N B. Let's install this guy. Okay, so now we have React Native.env installed. Let's go back to our terminal. You know, clearly we're going to have to reload. We just installed a bunch of stuff. Okay. 
Now, if we look back at our documentation here, you can see that we need to make some changes here to get access to the .env stuff. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did in my file to make that work. So let's open up our, let's open up our Babel config. And in here we need to add some more code. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a plugin section. And in that plugin section, we're using this module react native um, .env. And so that's kind of what's going on here. And so let's save that. Let's save my super base service. Um, here it's telling you to detect a change, so I need to restart the server. I'll do that in a minute, but let me just figure the rest of my, finish the rest of my super base configuration here. As I said, I cover all of this in uh, some other videos, which I'll link below. But um, after the main thing that we want to do here, it's pretty straightforward. We just want to create a, a super base client and return it. And so here's my super base client, and then at the end, I'm going to export it. so that it can be accessed in the rest of the application. And the first part we're going to do is we're just going to access to determine if we have an existing session. And based on whether or not we have an existing session, because if we go back to our uh, app.jsx, that's what we're trying to solve here, is do I have an auth session or not, and which screen to show. And Superbase will give us that information. So let's go back to Superbase service. Looks like everything is set up properly. Um, we're just to make sure everything's okay. I can show my Superbase URL, so we're just going to say console.log Superbase URL. I don't want to show my public key, but we'll show that. Um, and as it said, I'm going to need to restart my server, so let's control C, stop my server. Okay, and now let's start this again. Let's reload. Oh. All right, and then so it looks like I have no compilation errors, but let's go back to our home screen, app.jsx, because up here, here's where we're going to need to get access to Superbase. So let's do import okay, and it's complaining. Oh, I did not install Superbase. So let's go back and let's go to over here and let's do our expo install. Okay, let's go back to our terminal. Let's just see if we can get a reload to get everything going. Okay, let me try and restart my Expo client, start my app. Uh, looks like everything is not happy with that new... Did I get everything right? Let me control C and try to restart my server after the install. Okay, so looks like we have everything set up now. Now let's see, hmm, I should be seeing some console output. So I've installed Superbase here in auth, and then in my Superbase service, I'm telling it the console log Superbase URL. Let's see, did I not load it? Let's see if I did this right. All right. So it is, I did get my Superbase URL. This is a weird error that I keep getting. I'll do a little bit more research on it and try to make sense of what's going on with that. But now let's go back into our um, uh, home app. And what we want to do is when the application starts up, we want to check to see if we actually have a Superbase session. And the, the way that I'm doing it, always open to someone who has a different approach, is that we're going to use uh, React use effect. So let's add that, use effect and then down here use effect well, I only need one of these 
And then inside of my use effect, we will check to see if we actually have a super base session. And what we're going to do is if we have a super base session, then we're going to set our local auth variable with super base session. And then the other thing that we're going to do, super base auth uh, listens for state changes to determine if you're logged in or not. And that's what we're going to do here. Um, if we are logged in, and we might actually have a session because I've been testing on this device. But if you have a session, then we're going to log it out. And then we're going to set my auth session. And once my auth session is set, then it should render the home screen stack. If I don't have a session, it's going to render my auth stack. I mean, yeah, my auth stack. And um, that's what we got. So let's save this code. And as you can see, it looks like I must have a session because... Here we are on my home page. And the way we can verify that is we can start to take advantage of some of the functionality that we're getting from the fact that we do actually have a session in place. So um, to start off, one of the things that we can do is, if I have a session, we can come over here to my home screen and let's put our user email address up there. So let's go to our auth stack. Let's look at, no, our draw stack. Let's go up to the top. And right here where we have header, let's just change this to, Super base. See, did that auto import it for me? That would be very nice if it did. Yes, it brought in my super base. And let's go back down to my header super base. So on here, I get access to auth. And then you can see down here I have a user. And then I can say, oh, sorry, that gives me my user. If there's a real user, so let's make sure we put the Elvis operator. And then if I have a user, then let's render the user's email. Okay, let's save that. And you can see I have the email address of the user that I authenticated with. And so I think I have some styles to kind of clean this up a bit. So give me a second to see how I clean that up. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's do this. So there's my email address. Uh, for my authenticated user. So that's how we know we get an authenticated user. But let's do something with this logout so we can get this, this user out of here. And so we're back here in our button, and where's my logout button? Right here in my closed drawer with my logout button. So all I want to do is I want to once again take advantage of another Superbase function. So Superbase has a function called auth sign out. And we're just going to call auth sign out when we're going to close the drawer, then call auth sign out. So We've added that. It's complaining because it, it's async. So let's add async right here. And so we know we have, well, let's refresh this. So it's checking it found a session. There's my user session. Now let's log out. I've logged out and I'm back to my home page with no session. So the next thing we want to do is actually create the screens for you to create your own user and for you to actually log in directly through the login screen.